person per year. While if we move to other countries, even big countries like, for example, US or even Italy, which is very well known to be a, a large consumer of coffee, we only have 5.85 kilos of coffee per year per person. Um, but the trend in uh, producing country, as I said before, and so Central and South America, for example, it's a positive trend. So there is a growth, average growth of 10%, while in the European Union, more developed country for, for coffee, it is a negative trend. The fall is due, obviously, to, to the decrease of consumption, in particular in the European Union, due to many reasons. One is the, the exchange market problem, and for, for, in general, for the, for the crisis that uh, reached these countries. Um, in particular, they asked me to focus a little bit on the high-class segment, which is our positioning in the market. We are, we are positioned medium to a high company, and we are targeting a medium to high uh, public. Um, it's moved a little bit up, but I, I hope you're going to see it anyway. Um, in the recent year, due to the crisis, the, uh, the market is a little bit uh, polarized and divided. And so there is, uh, on one side, low price and poor quality, allow me this uh, very strong uh, word, but just to, to give you an idea, or on the other side, very high price and best quality. Um, this, obviously, the, 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 the fight uh, uh, against prices is always, uh, obviously weakening our company, but don't, not only us, but it's generally weakening the market, and is moving the market into um, less expensive raw material, and so really, really uh, decreasing the quality of, uh, of the product. Um, for us, uh, it was uh, really a, a company policy to preserve uh, the quality of our product and, and to really pr pursue a quality program during uh, the, these years. Um, and so for, for coffee, uh, doing a quality coffee, what, what does that mean? It means, first of all, buying the best origins of coffee um, from the, the producing countries and be giving a, an innovative and high quality service. This is for us uh, um, very important and it is part of our, our strategy, not only abroad, but also in the domestic market. Um, how do, you, how do we do this and how do we act in this high class segment, in particular in the export uh, department? So first of all, we work through a network of distributors or food service distributors around the world. Um, we work uh, uh, in the domestic and in the international market through a, a network of commercial partners for the retail market. And in particular, we open franchising or coffee shop so-called Cafe Verniano 1882, which is our company name and our year of foundation. Um, this really allows us to export our brand image, to strengthen our value, and uh, to let people better understand our company and our culture. So we try to make espresso culture. This is how normally we, we call ourselves and what we normally say. Um, Cafe Verniano is now working in uh, 60, so we got four countries in the last two months, so it's a, it's a good uh, success for us. Um, in 60 countries around the world, uh, obviously Europe is for us a big part of the business, also because the consumption of coffee in, uh, in Europe is, uh, is stronger, uh, but we're doing quite well in the uh, US, and now we're uh, ex expanding in the Middle East in particular and in the Asian countries. Um, what's the strategy of Cafe Verniano? Um, Cafe Verniano tries to turn to the markets that require a high class and quality product, which is very important for us, and at the right price. The word made in Italy now doesn't really mean a lot anymore, but <laughs> to us it means a lot, it means everything. We are not only a made in Italy company, but the espresso is an Italian product. So what we try to do is really to export not only the idea of a, of a made in Italy product, but a made in Italy product, which is for us very important. And it gets, it's becoming very important to our customers as well. Um, exporting, we, we do it in, uh, as I was saying, in many areas. Extra, uh, the European Union, one of uh, the most uh, growing market for us are the Middle East countries. Um,
particular, um, we cover all the Gulf area at the moment. In the US, um, it, was, um, it was a very challenging uh, business for us. The US market is very competitive. There are not only uh, Italian companies or European companies, many local companies. Um, so it was a very competitive and very tough. Our strategy, but as you see, it's, a biggest, it's one of the biggest uh, uh, country for, for consumption uh, in, in that area. Um, but um, the, the challenge, and we, tried, we are trying to succeed, positioning ourselves um, as a real Italian atmosphere coffee shop. So you can see here just a, a very bad picture, unfortunately it was the only one I had, and that's my brother, by the way. But <laughs> um, that is our coffee shop that we just opened in Manhattan. And we made a partnership with a very important Italian chain, which is called Italy, spelled like, like you see. It's a slow food concept, which is really doing well, not only in the US, but mainly in Italy and Japan as well. And they opened a sort of a, a food store where you can find the best high quality Italian products. And so opening inside this concept gave us a lot of brand awareness and in particular made the people think that our product was kind of true, like the other product. And so this is really opening many doors to us. That's why we are opening next year eight coffee shops in the California area and uh, in the second semester we will be opening in Florida as well. So it's a big challenge, but luckily we, we were well paid back. Um, I mentioned Japan just because the Italy concept store opening in Japan for, for outlets and we followed them with a private label product. Uh, it was very, not, not funny, but they told us um, high, uh, Japanese uh, motto was uh, high price for very high quality. So we had to come up with a product that was answering to this uh, request. And so we made a special line for, for the Japan market, uh, which is the highest possible uh, quality. I don't know if you know that Japan is the, high, there is the highest consumption of Jamaica Blue Mountain origin of coffee, which is the most expensive coffee in the world. And most of the production of this coffee is taken by the Japanese. So we had a big challenge in front of us, and so we came up with this uh, called the 1882 coffee line, which is having a, quite a good success in the market. And so maybe it was a good choice. The European market is, as I was, uh, it's a last, but for us it's a first. Um, there is a big coffee consumption. There is already a kind of an espresso culture, and so it's easier for us to talk about uh, coffee origins, to talk about uh, extraction time, a uh, very technical uh, word, but for, for, uh, for this market, which are not uh, new markets, it's, uh, it's, it's quite common. And so for us it remains the largest uh, market for us. Um, we are doing, uh, we have many projects uh, for, for the European market. Uh, first, for sure, is uh, increasing and improving our distribution network in all the countries. We cover most of the European countries, but there are still some spaces. Um, and also the coffee shop project. Uh, there are many concepts around uh, Europe, but um, we, we are uh, really uh, promoting uh, our Italian way of drinking coffee, which is um, a fast but uh, cozy way of, uh, of doing it, and so we are, we, are, we are doing quite well with the coffee shop project as well. Um, they asked me as well to, to have a look at, uh, at the emerging markets. Uh, for us, very new market, very small consumption, but big potential for the coffee. Uh, we have two, two main strategies in these markets. Um, for sure, serving the food service distributor, but because the food service and the hospitality industry is not so developed in these countries, sometimes it's a little bit premature. And in these cases, we'd rather start with the coffee shop project first, let people understand better the, the culture of the espresso, of the Italian espresso, and then eventually move to a pure and, and simple distribution. And so you can see that the uh, a simple distribution, and so going and selling to a distributor, we do that in um, in most of the country, most more developed countries, and we have 96 distributors in, the, in these markets, um, with a growth, a very high growth, and a turnover of around 3.5 million euro. Uh, I'm giving some, some examples of the country where we apply this uh, kind of strategy. Poland, for us, is, a, is the first country. 
uh, Bulgaria, Estonia, Slovenia, you see, these, these are all countries where the, the coffee culture is, is becoming popular, uh, people are becoming educated, and uh, it, it's sort of, um, it, it, it's, it's not only a trend, it's a, it's a habit for, for, the, for the population, and so that's why um, there are many coffee chains, there are many private-owned cafes, there are many restaurants and hotels, and that's our target. Um, the franchising concept is mainly used for the country, as I said before, where the espresso culture is not so developed. And so we, we sort of have to start from a, from a, a uh, in, in starting really from, from the basics of the coffee in order to let people understand what an espresso is, which is uh, something that seems very easy and normal for us, but maybe in these countries not so common. They're maybe used to tea, because they're tea countries, or maybe used to a kind of American so educating the people to a real Italian espresso is a big challenge and we try to do that with our franchising story. Um, we cover all the Middle East country except UAE with our franchising concept. We have stores in Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Oman, Kuwait, Jordan, am I missing something? Probably Qatar, yeah, I'm missing Qatar. Um, you see just a few examples, not Hong Kong and Casablanca were there, but I don't know why. But <laughs> um, in order to, to focus on the Middle East, as I said, we cover all the countries. And the concept is really appreciated because people start to understand more what is the Italian culture of coffee. Um, we do this also thanks to the coffee school that we created uh, five years ago. Um, it's a real school, it's not official unfortunately, but for us it is, and we go around to these places try, try to explain what, how to make a, an Italian espresso, but not only how to make a cappuccino, how to clean a machine, how to, how to teach people the taste of an Italian coffee. Um, the, the, our trainer are telling me that sometimes it's very tough, because people, they, they expect long drinks, they expect... Um, hot coffee, while the espresso coffee is not boiling coffee, so they have really strange expectations towards uh, an Italian espresso, and so we really need to start from uh, the origins of coffee, starting from the roasting facilities that we have, uh, giving them a, a big knowledge in order to appreciate our product, and, uh, and, and really, uh, at that, and from that, take it from them in order to expand and fully the potential. So I thank you very much. I hope you had a little overview on the coffee market, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Mrs. Gagliano. So in 25 minutes, you have the chance to taste the Gagliano coffee outside. Uh, well, oh, I'm sorry. I have the same problem. May I now invite Mr. Rashofer? from Indigo and Rushhofer Gastronomy Insights. Good afternoon. Um, first of all, I want to uh, thank you for the invitation. It's a great honor for me to be here. Uh, my name is uh, Heiner Rashhofer, I'm from Salzburg and I never worked for McDonald's and that's probably the reason why we have only seven Indigos uh, until now. Um, so what is Indigo? Uh, most people would call it a healthy fast food concept. Also, they would not be wrong, we consider Indigo to be more than that. Uh, and we always try to avoid both the word uh, fast food and uh, the word uh, that's it. We found what we thought two more suitable expressions, uh, which is first our subline, it is uh, eat and smile, and uh, then the expression feel good food, uh, which we believe has more spirit. So, what is feel good food? Um, that's easy.